this video or review will be about the Sony WM1A and I have the file M11 Pro here. The Sony came out like three years ago or something. So this is not a new device and there's been other reviews, I, although I didn't find that many, at least not that were in English. I, I found some, but not a lot. Um, and I didn't find any comparing to some of the later stuff like like this file M11 Pro, which would be the closest kind of thing to it. Um, I'll start by saying that this device is $1,200 and this device right now is uh, $649, I believe. I paid originally $729. I, sp I paid over $700 for sure for the file. M11. This is the M11 Pro. Um, this is the NWWM1A, not the Z, which is the gold version. The gold version is something like $3,000, which is just freaking ridiculous to me, especially since every review I saw of the two together said that the they were so close, it wasn't really a matter of which one was better, it was a matter of which signature you liked. So, um, you know, I, I, I like Sony products a lot, and I, I like their build quality. I've got headphones of theirs. Um, and so, you know, I, I wanted to give it a try and see, because I heard some some good, good things about it. Um, I, I'm gonna say right away that the build quality of this device I'll try to show this to you, is um, fantastic. I mean, if you're going to pay $1,200 for a player, this is how you want it to be built. That's the best way I can put it. Um, the, the screen which is not big. I've got it on right now. So here I'll, I'll kind of see if you can see that. Um, it's it's not a big screen, very functional. Um, it's got a hold switch over here in the side, up and down, right? Up for hold, down for not hold. Um, the buttons are really nicely laid out. So this is on off. It also brings the screen back on if the screen, because the screen goes into sleep mode pretty quick and you can adjust that. Um, the plus and minus are for the volume and you can also just, touch the uh, uh, volume and then go like this this way if you want um, play pause forward and forward and back um, what's nice is the plus has a little metal dot a little dimple you can feel with your finger and the minus doesn't the play pause has a little dimple so if you've got it in your hand you can feel that that dimple there and you can feel the other one and you kind of know where everything's at so it makes it really easy to use you know reach in your pocket in the dark you're just holding it and closing your eyes you can easily operate this the top there's a 3.5 and a balanced 4.4 one of the things i like is the case is a solid piece of aluminum that's been milled out which is obvious when you're holding it in your hand because everything is just there's no seams right there's no seams the back, the back has this kind of faux leather finish to it that is actually really nice with this gold um, Sony Walkman brand on it, logo. Um, it's NFC, it's, it has Wi-Fi it's, um, and it's Bluetooth. So you can connect this as a Bluetooth device. Um, has a SD card opening down here, which is nice. It kind of covers it up so it protects the SD card. And you see that there. Um, it's got its own proprietary USB connector and then a, you know, a little opening for where you'd put a strap basically that attaches that. Yeah, a wrist strap that attaches to that. The USB thing, we'll talk about that. Um, I actually am okay with that. Some people didn't like it. They said, oh, they wish it gone with regular USB. And, and I get that, but I, there's a reason why I'm okay with that. Um, the, everything's marked really well. You know, if you look at the file, it doesn't say anything. Okay. That's 4.4 and there's a balance 2.5 next to it and a 3.5, right? Here's your buttons, your, your, uh, pause, play pause and you're up and down back and forth. I mean your volume and 
SD card, and that's it. There's no writing anywhere on this thing. That's okay. But on the Sony, it says balanced for the balanced port. There's writing on or marking clearly marked on everything what it is, right? And I, and I actually really appreciate that. I when you hold these two thing devices in your hands, it's very apparent that the Sony is a is a much higher quality device in its design. The the file is, you know, I think it's an aluminum case. Yeah, it is aluminum, but it feels plastic almost. The FIO, it feels like aluminum in your hand. Um, I'm sorry, the Sony feels like aluminum in your hand. The FIO does not, but it feels, it's lighter, which I'm guessing is the battery because, and the, the, the aluminum frame, whereas the Sony has got, a, I think, a bigger battery and a, a you know, solid aluminum block. Um, the, the Sony... I don't know if you could see that right there. That is the battery indicator. And it's barely off of 100%. And I charged this like a week ago and have been listening to it extensively. So I don't know what to say about that. This supposedly it's like like a um like a 90 hour standby or some crazy thing, but I got to tell you, I mean, when I saw some things, because there were some other reviews I looked at that came out right after this came out. I'm guessing there's been a lot of firmware updates to the device, the, the device um, that have fixed things. First off, a lot of people are complaining in some of the other reviews about how the screen was really slow in the way it reacted right now it moved. I don't know if you're seeing that, but this screen is not slow. Um, and if I go back to a folder list or song list, um, I can go here, I can scroll, scrolls very nice, very fast. Uh, actually, this screen or the 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 way it functions in moving around inside of the device, much faster than the file, much faster. Now, boot up time, the file wins. The file is faster on boot up. This takes longer to boot up. But once this is booted up, this is much faster operational wise than the file. For sure. I noticed it right away. I was kind of stunned, actually, because the file is a new device and it's Android and it's got, you know, a, a powerful chip and it's supposedly, you know, much better. And a lot of people are talking about how fast the file interface was compared to the AKM. I mean, the uh, A and K or some of the other devices. But uh, I got to tell you, this this interface is way faster. And uh, like I can go to settings. Well, settings. Um, there's a lot of control over the sound of this device. Let's go back to, uh, let's do MTV Take On Me. Uh, let's go, I'm sorry, MTV. Uh, AHA MTV um, Unplugged Take On Me. Um, so from this screen, you can scroll up back up to your folders. You can go to direct sources on. If you turn that off, which is how I was listening to it a lot, sorry, turn that off. Now you can change, <sighs> Um, so there's a lot of different settings in this. Once you turn off direct, there's your e EQ, um, turntable. So you can choose arm resonance, um, standard turntable resonance, surface noise. Uh, and you can play around with that, or you can just turn it off. You don't have to even have it on. Um, and then there's also a, um, uh, volume normalizer. So basically, if you've got one track louder than another, this will normalize it so they're all the same volume. I don't really bother with that, but you know some people like like that. Um, you can adjust phase linear, making it sound more like an analog stereo system. Turn that on and off, and you can choose all, many different types for how you want that to sound. So you can really play, and so th and this setting here works really well. By the way, it upscales MP3s to be more like a FLAC file. Um, um, yeah, however it's working, it works really well. And I actually really like it with some of these features turned on. It, it actually really works. But e even if we just go, you know, back to this, the song, um, the interface is very fast and very easy to change. And, and one of the things I like is I can change it from, um, uh, playback screen to standard, which is with the album art spectrum analyzer. So if I, you can see that as it's playing. And I actually really like that. It, it kind of helps when I'm trying to figure out what, you know, what frequencies certain things are coming from. 
that's kind of nice to have that. Um, we can change it to an analog meter, which is this, which is just cool. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's just cool. Um, uh, and then there's also digital. So what it does is it's got the album again, but on top here, it has the, the VU meters, right? The digital meters. So um, I typically look, uh, leave it on the spectrum analyzer, but for now we'll just leave it on the artwork. It is smaller, obviously, than the um, the file screen. So if I go to, um, and you can see, maybe you can see how much slower this is. I mean, if I touch that, bang, let's wait for the data to load, and then we'll go, aha. Let's find that. Did I... Uh, Here we go, MTP unplugged. And let's go take on the, and then we'll go screen. So you can see the difference in, in the size and you can adjust the brightness. I have the brightness turned down on this right now. Um, battery life on this is significantly better than this device. Now, I'm gonna say that I think power output is better on the file. I'm not gonna bring in the specifications. I could do that, I guess. You guys can find that easy. These have been around for a while both devices. Um, <clears throat> Sony does not tell you what their chips are inside of it. They don't tell you a lot. They make all their own stuff, which I like. So they own this thing inside and out, beginning to end, right? So they, whereas the file is, you know, they got Android, they've got their own um, circuit board one they probably bought from another manufacturer. They've got chips they bought from another manufacturer and and a chips from yet another manufacturer and a clock from another one and they put it all together in here and you know it, and that's fine i mean this this has been my go-to device this i love the way this device plays no qualms about that and and it's been bug free i've had no trouble with it at all um so far in my use of this sony for a couple of weeks uh, same thing bug free faster operating system and um better battery life um, the file has a bigger screen, more luxurious looking screen, of course, but this has better control over the sound than the file, better build quality, better battery life. Um, and now this device, like I said, 1200, this device 649 as tested right now. Uh, what, I mean, is it worth the $500 difference? Cause that's what there is basically a $500 difference. Uh, and that's quite a bit. The file comes with a clear case, comes with a charging cable. The Sony comes with a charging cable, no case. This You get the charging cable and you get this. That's it. Um, that's okay with me. But I bought this case for the file. It's an aftermarket case, which I really like. And there's a couple of aftermarket cases I've seen for this that are really nice. So I don't really care they didn't give me a case. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I care more about how it sounds, to be honest with you, right? And And that's... That was really where it came down to me. What sounds better? So I've got some notes here that I took um, on on uh, different songs. And what I did is to be consistent. I tried a lot of stuff for some. I tried headphones. I tried IEMs with this device. Um, so I, I ran the gambit with different um, uh, outputs, right? The I will say that this has a low power output. It is not high output. I had, I had a lot of trouble driving um, the DT1990s. I could drive the Focal Clears just fine, but the DT1990s by Barodynamic, uh, it didn't want to do those. A couple of IEMs I tried also were, it was a little tough to drive. I used mostly the, um, the Monarchs and the Tequilas. And I also put in my 800 ESTs, my Sonys. Um, the 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 uh, tequila was driven very easily by this. I I could turn the volume down very low, and it was still really powerful on those. And this has a high gain setting. I didn't really need to use that. I used the high gain setting with the headphones so that I could drive them. But I I was at like a hundred percent volume to get the kind of sound I wanted out of them. When I say a hundred percent, I I just say this: the volume goes from zero to one hundred and twenty. I was all the way up at a hundred to get the volume I needed on headphones. And that wasn't loud. That wasn't loud. It was just, I could hear it well, and it was comfortable. So 
Um, so I used the Monarchs for my testing, and it was really simple because I've got the 4.4 adapter on here. So 4.4, 4.4. So I lined up songs like you just saw. Um, come back to life. Aha. Uh -huh. Why is that not? Um, I don't know. It's weird. No album art, but um, and I no. Oh, let me pause it. Uh, I just did you know four point four play. Took it out. Pause. Play four point four. Pause. And I just kept doing that back and forth with the right. And I I did some very close serious listening. Like my wife walked out, and I was like six inches away with my glasses from both screens, looking at devices all hunched over and 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 kind of my hands cupped over my ears and with these IEMs in and she's she like she like threw a towel or something out her to get my attention and I I'm like uh, I'm like look at her and she goes what are you doing and I said I got I'm trying to figure out the differences between these two and sound because I need to do a review and I want to make sure that I, I give good information and not you know just some fluffy bullshit review and so she's like okay whatever you weirdo and uh um I kept going and and for a couple hours really but I, I made some notes and I'm not going to go over every single song because there was a lot of them but I, I made some notes um to talk about the the differences in in sound quality of these two or not even quality let's just say the difference in sound signature um so the first song we'll go on is this one right here which is uh aha it's an 80s group but they did um, a release they they came out I think in the early two thousands on um, MTV Unplugged, and they they the singer they did this they did two songs that um, I've got recordings of and one of them is Take on Me and the guy's voice is just freaking fantastic I mean I, I don't know what kind of a singing he did before he was doing this kind of eighties uh, type rock but uh, his voice is fantastic and. The recording is so good. The guitar and the piano is just, it's just a fantastic song. Uh, it's very emotional and moving in the way he's singing it. In fact, the crowd, you could see some people in the crowd almost getting teared up when he's singing it because it's, there's so much power in, in the way he's delivering it. Um, and so that song, though, doesn't reproduce well on everything. But on the Monarchs, with a, a device that can deliver it, I mean, it really sounds fantastic. So on the Fio and on the Sony, the Sony produced it better and and so then and when he's singing so first off the guitar in the beginning and then the piano the sony and the the file were very close but the sony just pulled ahead slightly on the detail of the guitar and and the kind of airiness of it on when he starts singing there's a slight vibrato to his voice and you can hear it with the right equipment with the right stuff um i can hear it with both devices I liked it a little bit better on the Sony and I can't tell you exactly what I liked. It's just something sounded a little more, more full, more rich on it. And it could just be, they've got the bass enhanced a little and, or in the mids. And so that that's kind of, you know, adding to his voice, but I, I, it was, it was very close. I want and I'm even in my note says the Sony was better, but just barely. So it was so close. Um, Alexis Cole, the song alone together, uh, the Sony had the edge in the beginning. Um, it had the be an edge because the beginning symbol and the snare drum um, on that song, uh, it, which is how it just starts, is a symbol and a snare drum being played. And uh, the drum was a little fuller, and the symbol felt like a richer sound to it on the on the Sony. Um, as the song moved on, the they kind of got to be the same, but it felt like the Sony could pull some more info out. It retrieved more detail than the file was. And that's just how it felt to me using the same IEM again and just plugging back and forth. And I kind of went back and forth in the beginning several times just to make sure I was really hearing what I was hearing. Because, um, you know, sound memory is like horrible. Audio memory is horrible, right? It's like you lose almost instantly. So I was going back and forth, back and forth again and again, trying to make sure I was, I was right on that. But again, when I say better, I mean... I don't know if it was better. It was just slightly more detail and a little bit richer sound, but it was just a little bit better. Um, the next song, Amanda Martinez from her Amor album. Um, in fact, it was the album. It was the song Amor. Um, no real difference. Uh, there was some guitar that kind of hits. And so in the beginning is a very light guitar. And then she starts to kind of make this 
uh, vocal uh, moaning sound and then uh, it, guitar kind of hits and she starts singing and um, in the beginning it the Sony sounded a tight up uh, type the Sony sounded a slight bit more open like a little bit more uh, airier I guess uh, and I I couldn't really tell much difference other than that though uh, Bastille um, Bad Blood album um, the very first song in there which I don't have the name of it now um, I, I may put it into the notes we'll see um, the bass was better on the Sony and it felt more realistic more detailed but you know just a little but I did feel it. I, I liked it better on the Sony, but but not much at all. Um, Beyonce, the Lemonade album, uh, the song Pray You Catch Me, um, that song's got a very deep bass in the beginning of it. And on the Sony, it felt a little bit better. But on the file, the vocal felt a little more forward, but sounded really good um, and uh, a little more open. But on the Sony, when she starts to sing in in the beginning of that there's a backup vocalist you can hear them on the file but on the sony you could hear them separated more like there was more detail um you know sh kind of uh um uh, uncovering those background singer voices separately more so than the file was doing but again this is all just tiny increments very little amounts okay there was no shocking difference whatsoever. Boston, the group Boston, the song from their Boston album. Uh, I've got a, a Japanese remastered copy of that, and it's really good. Um, the song Foreplay, um, the, in the very beginning, the guitar that it opens up with uh, was better on the Sony. I, and there was a, a, not distinct, but there was a definite difference there. And the Sony felt, again, more clear and more open. But, you know, not a huge difference, just there was a difference. Um, on Dito, the group Dito, or the singer Dito, um, there's like the second song on the album, uh, uh, Give You Up. The vocals were open and mm, a, a touch bit fuller. Um, it was like there was a reverb in the background going on, like an echo on the Sony that I couldn't hear on the file. And, you know, I don't know if that was... I, I had this on direct source, so I wasn't applying any of the DSP stuff. So I don't think it was doing anything there. Um, I don't know if it was just, I don't know if that details in the song and it was just pulling it out, whereas the file couldn't. But I definitely heard it more on the Sony than I could on the file. Um, Elton John, I have the remastered version of uh, Captain Fantastic. And the song Captain Fantastic um, was better on the Sony in the opening with the guitar. It was clearer and it more detailed, like a little more realistic. Um, and the background instruments were a little bit better separated and I could hear them more on the Sony than I could on the file. But again, it was it was very slight. Um, Candace Springs, um, I think the album is Indigo. The song Don't Need the Real Thing um, sounded the same on the both. I, I couldn't tell the difference at all. It sounded exactly the same. Uh, Metallica, Ride the Lightning. Um, the guitar in the opening, you know, that electric guitar picking in the opening, it sounded a little bit more detailed on the Sony, a slight bit more. Um, and then there was a little bit better um, um, separation when the when that chorus kicks in and the guitars are jamming and it's uh, starts to really pound. Um, the, the everything sounded the same on both. I, I couldn't tell the difference then. Only the beginning and that that detailed upper end, I could hear a little difference on the Sony, but but not that much. So. The lesson here is that there's not much difference in sound. The Sony, I believe, is a little bit better. The one thing I will say, though, is that I heard hiss on some songs with the file. I did not hear that hiss with the Sony. And the Sony, I mean, the file uses THX, right? Which it is definitely darker and clearer because I had the M11 as well as the M11 Pro. And I could hear, I did a side by side. I have a review of that. And the M11 Pro is, is you know, better sounding than the M11. It has a darker, clearer background. Um, the Sony had just as dark and clear a background as the file M11 Pro, and maybe even more so. Like I said, I could hear a hiss with the file sometimes. I could hear some background noises sometime, like some, a little bit of a hum or a little, you know, differences. I could not hear in the Sony. I could only hear the music on the Sony. 
So whatever they've done in the technology they've designed, and you have to take that into account. Sony is is a monster compared to Fio. Sony has been around, you know, decades and decades, right? They've been around since since I was a kid, uh, which is a long time ago. Fio has not. Um, Sony had designs everything from the ground up. That's why they don't even tell you what's in it. They don't tell you if it's a Sabre chip or an AK chip or what it is. They they just it's their own stuff that they make. Same thing with the software. It's not Android. Um, I at first in my I did a written review and I I thought it might be Android, but a very modified version. But it's been I guess confirms from some other people that it is not Android. That it's their own operating system. And it's evident because it's much faster than the file. It's no no joke. It's much, much faster than the file. And the file is Android, so it has all, you know, you can play videos, you can go search the internet with it, that kind of stuff. The Sony's dedicated music player, that's it. Um, the sound differences, though, are very slight, with the Sony just having the slightest edge, really, really. I If, if this was a blind test, and someone put two devices in front of me with no markings on them, and I or just I was blindfolded and they kept plugging back and forth. I don't know how much I could tell the difference, right? Because I was looking at them when I was doing this. Could I really tell the difference if I was blindfolded? I, I can't promise you that I could. It was very, very close. So the file has a little more power, but not as good a battery life. It's a little bit slower than the Sony in operation. It doesn't feel as premium for sure as the Sony does. Um, is the Sony worth $500 more? That's up to you. If if you're like kind of a Sony fanboy, maybe like I am a little bit, I guess I am a little bit. I like Sony products. I always have. Since I was a kid, I've liked Sony products. Um, I, I'm still debating whether I think it's worth more, $500 more. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I, I, I listened to the AK380 and the file was the M11 Pro sounded better than the AK380 by a margin. Like I could hear a different difference. That's one of the reasons I sold my AK380 is because I'm like, why would I have this device that that was like almost two grand? And this thing at the time was 700. It's like, what the hell? So it was like a no brainer that why would I keep that thing? I could sell that and buy a bunch of other gear to test out. Um, and so I've used the file for a long time now. It's been my go-to. And I got to tell you, the Sony has been my go-to for the last two weeks. I really enjoy using this device. There's, I really like the interface on it. I love the way it feels in my hand. I love how premium it is. The functionality is really good. I, if, if these were the same price, I would take this device without a doubt. Absolutely, I would say this is the one I want. Um, but that $500 difference, I don't know if I can justify it. So you're going to have to think about that. The interface, I like better than the Sony. The Sony's faster. The sound is just as good and better in, in many cases, but only a slight bit, a slight bit. If you're a real purist and you just want this pure, clean sound, I think the Sony wins, but just barely. Um, and I like the signature of it because there, it is there is a signature. It does have a sound that is slightly different than the file, right? Um, and you can play with the DSP on this, and I like what they've set up for the DSP with that turntable settings and the analog settings, as well as the EQ. I, I really like and enjoy that, and on some songs, it worked really well and sounded really good. So um, definitely, and then this can be used as, as a DAC as well. It has a USB DAC function, USB mass storage function. And I was I said I was going to cover something about the cable. Um, you know, I do I have the cable sitting right here? I think I do. Okay, well anyway, I was gonna talk about the cable. I, I don't have the cable in front of me right now. I don't know what I did. I think I might have left it upstairs in, in my in my bedroom upstairs. Um the it, the cable is not a standard USB, it's their own proprietary jack. You can buy the cable for like eight bucks. I found one out on Amazon, so it's it's not a big deal. Um I think the reason why, and I wasn't an engineer sitting in the meeting when this was designed, all right? But I think one of the reasons they have their own proprietary cable is, you know, sometimes if you buy off the shelf USB cables to charge things or plug in whatever you get, if a standard isn't followed exactly, you can damage a device. Um, there's problems that can happen by using. I, some people saw this with uh, Apple, and especially in the early days, and even recently I've seen it, 
where a slight change internally um, and you use an off shelf cable and you blow your burn your device up, right? Apple phones get damaged or the batteries get damaged by using the wrong charging cable. Even though it looks exactly the same, you can't tell the difference. Uh, even sometimes it'll come up and tell you when you go to charge it, uh, sorry, this is not an Apple cable, it won't work. Um, that kind of thing happens with all devices and USB cables, you'd think everyone would be standardized and it'd all be the same, but the sad fact is it's not. And some manufacturers uh, try to cheap out and they use poor quality stuff and you can end up damaging devices. So I think Sony just said, look, use our own interface and that's it. They just have to get a cable from us. We don't need to worry about it. They're not going to go blowing up our stuff and doing warranty returns because they use the wrong cable. I think that might be why. It could also be that that cable, because they have their own software, that cable may have more information it can transfer back and forth um, for control of the device through their software. I didn't download the software and test that out. I'm going to do that next um, just to see if there's any anything good about it. But I don't, it's, you know, a three-year-old device, so I'm not really too worried about that. I just want to play music with it. The storage on it, because a lot of people are like, well, it has 125 gigs of internal storage. Um, and, and you can, you know, some people are saying you couldn't use over a 256 gig memory card. Well, that's been verified. You can actually put a one terabyte memory card in here. I have one coming right now. It'll be here tomorrow. Um, you can put a one terabyte memory card in here. So now you're going to have 1.125 terabytes of storage space. That's more than enough for anybody's <laughs> needs on this device. As far as I'm concerned, you could load up about a hundred DSD albums with that. Um, you could do a lot. So um, that's a lot of storage. Um, I have, I have a, 400 gig card in here and I have more than I can ever listen to. I have more stuff. I have over a terabyte of, of, of FLAC files and DSD files, probably about two terabytes, but that's on my server in my, in my house. The, um, I don't need that much with me, right? Cause there's a lot of stuff I don't listen to. It's only, it's rarely that I listen to it, but I have it anyway. Um, so more than enough storage. So it's going to be up to you whether or not, you like Sony and the premium design and feel of the Sony and function of it over the file or other devices in this price range. But at $1,200, that's a steep markup to pay over something like the file. And there's the, I haven't heard it yet, but I hear the Shanling M6, which is about 700, it's like 699. I've heard that device sounds even better than the file and possibly the same or better than the Sony. I did see a review where the M1, a here was tested and they said it sounded better. Uh, they did a kind of a blind test and they had a shambling, shambling M6 and everybody liked the Sony more. So, and that was kind of a blind test. Now, I don't know because um, I haven't heard that device. I'm going against the file, which I know extremely well. So hopefully I helped you in some way. Um, have a great day, guys. And uh, thanks for watching.